So welcome to Zen 10 with Jackie Rose of Rejuven Tangle, day two of this week. And I want to show you something that I did after yesterday. I put in these orbs, and I'm going to show you what we're going to do here, and then we're going to work on this section. So if you wanted to do this, now you can do, do anything you want. You might want to leave this blank or fill them in with other things. So what I'm suggesting, or what I'm doing, is I'm filling each one of these in with orbs. So I can either trace along the edge, round the corner, trace round the corner, just like we do in the pattern in Zeppo, and then color in the little white specks in the background. Now another way to do this is just pick a section and draw an arc shape in each corner, just rounding off those corners and then putting some ink in there. So different, two different ways to do that and depending on what yours looks like. So that's, you can decide. So I'm not going to spend that much time on this. This is something you can do on your own if you feel like you'd like to fill these in, as I will do that more after class as well. And then tomorrow you'll see how it looks when it's all filled in. Now what we're going to do here, we've got our pen. We take a nice deep breath in and out. Feel totally relaxed. You're in the present moment. Now, if you if yours looks like mine, because when we do this, everybody's can look differently. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to look at these trails. I'm going to call a little trail. And you've got this line underneath, right? So I'm going to imagine that line is going to come through to the next section, but I'm going to reverse the angle. So this is kind of curving to the right, and I get here, and I'm going to curve it to the left, staying right in that one section. Now it might be easier to turn the tile or sketchbook and do it that way. Always be in a nice comfortable position and if you don't have these to continue on just make these curved lines. That's all you have to do. leaving enough space in between for our pattern that's going to go in here. Now we're going to turn this into a grid. So we're going to kind of follow along the shape of this angle. So I'm going to just kind of draw another one, maybe just down the middle there. And I think I'll draw another one. Now it's kind of narrow here, so I'm going to imagine there's another one coming up. And then maybe I'll just start. Hmm. Well, I don't know if I want to do that, actually. I'm just going to start from that uh, same point and just do another one dividing this section in half. I think I'll do the same on the other side, just so we have some more grids. Great. And now, let's pick a section, just one section in here. Find one corner and start to draw these arc shapes. So we're just drawing an arc. And we're going to keep drawing that in that same direction, nice and slow and relaxed. Until that whole section is filled up. And now what we're going to do is find another section. Now I'm going to, uh, yeah, find another section, but 
have it on one of the corners, diagonal corners. So you don't want to have it right next to it. It might be like every other one. So I'm going to find a diagonal corner right here. And I want to do, I'm going to pick this section, but I want to pick a different corner and go in a different direction. So maybe I'll click on this corner here, top right, rather than the top left over there. And now it's just going, same stroke, but we're just going in a different direction. And you want to keep doing that with every other one or find a diagonal. So you know, so right here is another diagonal. Here's that point. So for this section here, each diagonal section would be here, here, here. So wherever there's a corner, the diagonal corner would be where to do it again. Otherwise, you can just think of every other one. So we're just going to always pick a different corner to start in. And just focusing on each stroke. We're in a meditation mindfulness session. We don't think about what it's going to look like. Just find the next section, pick a corner, and draw your arc shapes. Giving each line your undivided attention. Nice and relaxed, focusing on being in the present moment, letting everything go out of your mind. Start to feel your whole body relaxed. Taking some more deep breaths in and out. Now you notice I kind of made a little boo-boo here uh, and I did not do every other one. And that's okay. Nobody cares. I kind of like how that looks. Maybe I'll do that again over here to kind of even it off. So whenever we have an oops, that is an opportunity for other possibilities. And it just brings you into doing something different. So. It's all good. Sometimes, because there's no perfection in Zentangle and nothing has to be even, and so we'll see what happens. And most times it ends up being better. Kind of look how that look, looks together. Very, very cool. See, even teachers have oops. But there really is no such thing as oops in Zentangle because there's no right or wrong in Zentangle. Everything's a suggestion. And with the reason why we, every we teach patterns is so that you don't have to think about anything. It's a mindfulness class. We don't want you to have to think about a thing, but we do want your, you to listen to your own inner artist. 
when it appears. And that's just following your desire. So let's say you're drawing something after, you know, because you're paying attention to the instructions. And all of a sudden, you have this desire to maybe color something in or add orbs or, or do something totally different and wild. That's your inner artist telling you, coming out. You need to listen to that. Which most of you do. But Zentangle helps us get in touch with that inner artist. And when we slow down and relax and allow ourselves to make oops or to do anything we want, that inner artist can come out even more. And then you are amazed of what you end up creating. Remember, you'd always have your paper in an angle that's comfortable for you. Your pen only needs a light touch. Make sure you're not pressing too hard on that pen. And as you can see, so here, those are the two that I put together by accident. And then I have these together. I did this on purpose because I had art, because this gave me permission, right? I did an oops. I'm like, well, might as well do it again, right? So almost like when we're on a diet and we blow it. Well, might as well eat some more. But in this case, it's a good thing. Eating more is not always a good thing. But you can see how cool it looks. It doesn't look bad. It doesn't look like a mistake or an error. It never does. So this pattern is similar to the pattern Knight's Bridge. And in Knight's Bridge, we color in every other section rather than drawing lines. So this is more of a variation of that. So that is day two. Um, if you want to continue doing these orbs like I'm going to do, you can do that for the rest of the day today or on your own. Or you might want to fill these in with something different. Or you might just want to leave them and see what happens on shading day. Because on day five, we use our pencil and our tortillon, which is our blending stick. And if you don't have one, you can have a Q-tip, but that's uh, not until day five, which is Friday. And when we shade, it transforms our whole creation. So that's it for today. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow.